It's all right, man. I'm all right with it today, though. You know, this is stuff that I've worked through years. This isn't just something today I'm working through, you know? My name is Joseph Perscone. Hear my story. Um, I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Come of a very large American Italian family. We were the family that everybody visited. Um, you know, where you ate, it was a small house, but we didn't care, man. There was always food and laughter. My father uh, used to make uh, Italian wine in the basement. And uh, we would always sneak down the basement, you know, and, and drink this stuff. And uh, I remember, <laughs> You know, like it made us feel a little weird, you know. Um, I don't know how much we would drink, but I do remember puking. And I remember uh, we'd always go back for more and, and always would puke. Out of the basement, we took it to the streets. You know, um, my, um, my uh, the people I looked up to um, at that point, at 10 years old, were into drugs. There's a lot of uh, chaos. You know, the drinking, um, the drinking continued now at, at like, I would say I'm in maybe fourth grade, third grade, fourth grade. I got introduced to LSD and meth. And it wasn't just me, you know, these were the, you know, people I was, you know, on the streets with. Other, other kids, you know, that, that, you know, were experiencing the same things, you know. So um, I remember like uh, my brother was a dealer and I used to steal his meth. I used to steal this powdered stuff. I didn't know, I don't even know if I knew it was meth, you know. My brother found me climbing out of the roof onto the roof and I was gonna jump off. And I remember, <clears throat> the reason I'm bringing that up because this was important because I remember him grabbing me and I remember my brother hiding me. You know, he, he laid a blanket on top of me and then laid on top so my dad wouldn't see me. And I remember thinking, why is my brother hiding me from my dad, you know, like, and um, that created a lot of scars. And now that I look back, you know, like, so I would hide. That's how I dealt with when I got into the, Feeling less than that blackness, that um, however you want to describe it, I would go into a depression and I would hide from people. You know, that, that was the start of, I think, uh, really isolating, you know. So when I was 12, I was uh, big into swimming. And um, uh, my parents, I guess, whoever I did, whatever, I, I joined the YMCA. And um, the coach that, um, that was coaching us at the Y was a predator. Of course, I know that today. I didn't know it at the time. He was a sexual predator. And um, what he would do is take these boys home once they got, he built the trust up and he'd rape them pretty much, you know? So he took me and my buddy to the hockey game one night. My guests, you know, it was okay with my parents. We were sleeping overnight and the dude raped me at his house, you know? And, um, you know, I just remember, man, it was like I was stuck. You know, I was like, I, I felt like I was, if I didn't do what this guy was, was telling me or making me do, I would die. That's how I felt, like I was going to be dead, you know, like he scared me to that point, you know. But I really felt that my parents didn't love me because how could they allow this, how could they allow me to be in that situation, you know, like... Um, and from that point on, I started remembering fighting for love, you know, my, my family and my household. And that dynamic of that love was missing. Like up to that point, I felt like there was love, you know, and that love was broken, you know, and um, I didn't feel that love anymore. And I felt from that point on, I had to fight for it. You know, I've lost everything that I own 10 times. Um, every time was a rock bottom but it still wasn't enough. I was still empty, even after I got things back every time. I never received or, ex or, 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 or was able to understand that someone loved me, you know, like that I could have a heavenly father, not an earthly father, but a father that truly created me, which I believe in a father that loves me. So I, I, I started that journey five years ago, um, trying, to, trying to find what that is. And um, didn't get off to a good start. I um, started really heavy in my addiction. I have a son who's today 39. He was shot because of this addiction seven years ago and he's paralyzed. And I started trying to help him and try to fulfill that emptiness by maybe helping my child and giving back to him. 
And, um, you know, I, I, I thought by giving back that that would, you know, fulfill some of that. And uh, it was all that did was make me feel more guilty as a father. And I got heavy into my addiction. Um, I was using very heavy, uh, and my drug of choice at the time was heroin. So I decided to uh, buy a bunch of drugs, get on a bus, and come to Florida and uh, try to search for recovery, try to search for my God, you know. Um, and um, so while I was in, uh, in the, the rehab, I got introduced to a place called Steadfast Recovery. Um, I knew it was, um, you know, God opening up a door. And that this was the place I needed to be. I did okay, you know, but um, I relapsed. And um, it was only for a day, you know, um, and I died, you know. And people the house where I was living, they, they really didn't know what it was. I was, I took some uh, heroin, it was supposed to be what is, ended up being, um, fentanyl and uh, it was it was the weirdest thing that I've ever experienced and I've experienced a lot of drugs um, but it was a wake-up call you know um, when I when I when I relapsed and I went to the hospital for three days you know God spoke to me and it was um, it was a, a decision that had to be made you know it's like either you do it my way, or you do it your way. And I knew if I did it my way, that I'd be dead. So um, I made a choice, you know, that I was, I made a decision that I was gonna do whatever it took, you know, to learn what this, this program was, along with uh, my higher power, and um, start this journey of recovery in Narcotics Anonymous. And um, it's been the best thing to save my life today. Hey, if you're out there, man, and you uh, kind of can relate to anything that I shared, you know, um, I know I'm not unique and I know I'm not the only one feeling pain from their past. But you just need to know, man, that we have an identity today. You know, once we t get rid of the drugs and once we truly cry out to our God, he'll hear us and he'll give us what we need. Not before, not after, when we need it. and. Uh, my identity today is in my Lord and Savior, who I call God, and uh, there's hope. There's hope. And stop using, put down the drugs, seek and you shall find, man, because if you truly seek with your heart, he'll reveal himself to you. Thanks.